Hello, my loop friends. Welcome to Live Loopers. My rap name is Alex. Look at me making two Loopy Pro videos right in a row. If you watched the last Loopy Pro video and you are a person who read the Loopy Pro manual, you may have realized that I perhaps did not read the Loopy Pro manual before I made that last video. Sorry, not sorry. I'm not like really a manual guy. Like, I mean, I just want to get some software and use it and learn how to use it through using it. And uh, that's how I've always been. It's probably how I'll always be. Loopy Pro is a software that I am really, I'm going to be using it a moose ton. Uh, so I am now filling in the details reading the manual, pouring through, like really focusing in, and I have found some things that if you skimmed the manual or you don't know where to find the manual, I'll tell you where to find it. Or if you just, um, you know, don't really have time to read the manual but would like to know if there are important things in it, this is the video for you. The thing that I'm gonna mention is pretty important. Uh, so important that not only is it mentioned prominently right near the beginning of the manual, but it is also mentioned prominently in that tour thing that pops up and explains to you uh, important things about Loopy right when you first download it, which I may also have skipped. And I wouldn't even say that it's something that I didn't understand and pick up just from using loopy so a lot of you will already know this and understand it but it's an important concept so i'm including it right here in the beginning it's the different configurability levels for loopy of which there are three um, you can set your settings that you are most likely to use for loop behavior in the general settings and then loops will be behave that way but then each color group can have its own uh, individual or its own color groups settings for behaviors and those will override the general settings and then each individual clip itself can carry its own configuration which can override those color groups so that is what makes Loopy such a dream looper, like the looper that I've always dreamed of. It just has like this wonderful configurability. The number two thing that I learned from reading the manual, uh, I learned that there's, um, you know, I use the, I avoided using AUV3 stuff for as long as I possibly could but now Loopy Pro is making it very, very attractive to use it. And when I use AUV3s uh, within Loopy, uh, I notice that some of them have this keyboard thing along the bottom. A lot of the AUV3s that uh, receive note values come with their own keyboard, but uh, if they don't, or even if they do, uh, Loopy Pro has its own keyboard and you can use that one. And it has the little lock unlock thing for sliding the keyboard up and down an octave. You can also uh, pinch and swell the keyboard. Oh my goodness, I would have never ever found that just by trial and error. Um, but reading the manual, there it was. You can pinch and swell the keyboard so that if you are like me and you have old people eyes, you can uh, swell the keyboard really big and make it really easy to key in uh, what you're keying. And if you have a piece of music that requires, you know, notes that are three octave apart, you can like pinch the keyboard uh, really small and get all of those notes. And that is super useful. And uh, as a, just a little bonus, uh, I noticed uh, from reading the manual that uh, there's also a presets button and some of the AUV3s 
uh, will give you access to uh, which presets they have so that you can get that right through Loopy because some of the AUV 3s have like a whole lot of screens to go digging through and it's a whole lot of extra button presses that you you know are spending time on if you are like me and you like to go real fast and make music at the speed of thought uh, you can you know try it and see uh, some it's easier to use that preset button and just uh, find your preset right there and some of them it's easier in the AUV3 so um, it's a uh, very cool to have that option so that you can try it both ways and see which one works <laughs> Y'all ready for this? Oh my goodness, I love this one! I uh, read the manual and discovered that uh, if you watched the last video, I was like talking about how it can be a little bit difficult to slide the loops around um, and that there's a new uh, clip menu that if you slide up on a clip, uh, it just pops up a menu. And uh, I have just been making, I've been shoo, go away menu, you know, over and over again, not really paying much attention to what is on that menu. But reading the manual, uh, I have seen that one thing that is in that menu, um, there is divide, expand, multiply. And, uh, um, you know, you're like, what's the difference between expand and multiply? I'll tell you what the difference between expand and multiply is. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, if you multiply, if you have a clip and you recorded that clip, and for whatever reason you want to just double it, you want to make it um, like it's a four bar clip and you want to make it into an eight bar clip with that same bit of music in the first four bars repeating in the last eight bars. Uh, you can do that. You just press multiply and it does that. If you are recording a piece of music and you know it's 16 bars long and you like the first eight bars, you think you did it perfectly, but you kind of messed up a little bit in the last eight bars and you don't really even need the last eight bars, you know, you're happy just to have the first uh, eight bars just keep looping, uh, you can press the divide and it will just chop it right in half and start looping the first half of it. That's super handy. But expand. Oh my god, is it expand or is it extend? Looked it up, it's extend. That extend button. Oh, be still my heart. Um, I am a person who loves negative space. Like, you know, sounds are beautiful. I love sounds. And you put some sounds in, and sometimes you can really um, bring out how important sounds are by how much negative space there is in between when it loops again. A lot of times, for years, I have been the kind of looper that will just like make, you know, four bars of fun sounds that I really like, and then just uh, go off and do something, be like loading the next and just letting the rest of the track load up with negative space, uh, and, you know, just paging through screens, getting my next instrument ready or whatever. Uh, and then come back and like press end so that there's tons and tons of negative space in that clip Well extend button will just do it for you like you don't have to spend that 90 seconds All you do is you just record those four bars and Then you press the extend button and it just pads it out with space it doubles it and the rest is just blank space and then you can press the extend button again and then you have like one quarter sounds three quarters negative space and you can just keep going are you kidding me I love it I am going to use the extend button I use it daily I've been using it ever since I read it in the manual I love the manual I was reading the manual and I learned that you can copy and paste widgets, buttons, and things, whatever you want, from one project into another project. I mean, it was, like, I mean, I guess it sort of occurred to me that you could, like, cut and paste thing. I mean, I could, I saw somebody else do it on another video, and I mean, it, in the back of my mind, it was like, yeah, like, if you're making another uh, page, you can cut and paste some widgets from one page onto another page that's great 
but I just wasn't even thinking. I just wasn't even in that neighborhood of the galaxy that you could cut and paste some widgets from one project into another project, which is huge in terms of helpfulness. Uh, I have like one base project that I start from, like I configured everything the way I want it, and then I just start from that. And sometimes it's been the case that like I have that base project and then I'll be like making some music and I have the music in there. And then I like think of some adjustments that I wanna make and then I make the adjustments and I'm like, oh, I can either save the music or I can save the adjustments. But now I know that I can just copy those adjustments back into the base project. That is a beautiful thing that the manual has shown me. And speaking of uh, making new pages, um, maybe not the most useful thing I learned by reading the manual, but very interesting that you can, when you're copying, when you're making a new page, when you plus to like add another page to your workflow, uh, you can actually specify whether you just want to make a blank page or make a page that like copies just the widgets and stuff from another page that's already existing or you can even copy the widgets and the music and the clips and everything from you, there's three options to specify when you are making a new page. Didn't know that. Thanks, manual. So as might now be readily apparent, I have been reading the manual, digging in. Uh, if you would like to read the manual, there is a link to it down below. I'll sort of flash it on the screen because it's not even that hard to type in the web address of the manual. Uh, I not a manual guy, but I would uh, suggest to anybody who is going to be using Loopy Pro a lot, such as myself, a lot, lot, uh, read the manual. It's there, it's good, it's um, not fully complete, uh, but it's, uh, it's, you know, it's evolving, and what is there is full of, like, really cool, useful information that can help you uh not everybody you know is using loopy pro for the same types of music creation you know, loopy pro has opened up the doors for everybody to go in all kinds of different directions so whatever direction you're going in the manual has something for you so that's this video in a nutshell i did say that i was going to make a a video talking about how I made my workflow and maybe demoing what it can do um, if people uh, requested that in the comments and really only one person requested that in the comments but that's okay I get it um, but uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make that video anyway because uh, I think it would be useful for you but even if not it would be useful for me so I mean, I'm just gonna make it. Alright, so hopefully that'll be the next video. Um, and uh, loop on. Loop on! Read the manual and loop on.